so nice to see you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Oh my God, and so you much. brought out the very rare, lovely, yeah. sunny California exactly. weather. Exactly. Does it feel like home now, California? Uh, you know, I, I, because I've emigrated to several different countries, I was born in Scotland, I, I feel everywhere is home and nowhere is. And now? Yeah, yeah, of course. Now, your first story, your first Our door, very your first flagship for Demologica. And this was where we really, it became like an open kitchen, open seven days a week, open all day. Uh, lots of revolutionary things in our industry that we did. No one booked by their name, we booked by the room. We redesigned what a treatment room looks like. Right. So this became the showcase for the brand. Let's yeah. go and have a look. Yeah, let's come on in. I can't wait to show it to you. You've been an amazingly successful businesswoman. Thank I you. I mean, you've built this incredible empire and you built it from nothing. I want to go back in time a little <laughs> bit because I remember the first time we met, it was at a book event and you yeah. came up to me and you said, that you were the founder of Dermalogica, which of course I knew. And then he said, not bad for a girl who left beauty school in the south coast of England at the age of 16. That's right. And you have no, when you left, give us a little bit of the backstory because there's nothing in your educational backstory that led you to being a kind of, no, you having a global business empire. No, the thing that is the root of, of everything, I think, when I trace back, right from the beginning when I was two years old, my father died. My mother was a trained nurse, but because she married, she had to give up her job, which was the case up until about 1967 in the UK. You, you, it was expected that once you were married, you were already going to be taken care of. So my mother was 38 years old, my father died suddenly, and she had four children to raise on her own. But she had a skill set that she could fall back on and keep our family together. And now because my father had died, she was no longer a married woman, she was a widowed woman. So she was then allowed to work again. It was just a crazy story, I could write a book about that. So when my mother was raising us, she drummed into us, you always have to learn how to do something. You have to have a skill set. Because if, goodness forbid, what happens, happened to me happens to one of you, you need to be able to put food on the table immediately. I got my first job at 13, working in the local hair salon just outside of Paul Dorset. What kind of a weekend job? Yeah, weekend job. I tried a paper round. It was so bloody awful, I couldn't do it. Because when it's raining and cold, you've got to get up at like six in the morning to get the morning papers delivered. I couldn't, I lasted six weeks. I said, that's that, what else can I do next? My girlfriend Debbie from school said, I think there's a salon in, in the village that will employ you underage because her friend got a job there doing the laundry. I said, I'm going in. I got my job at 13 years old. Couldn't be seen by any member of the public because it was illegal. But I did the laundry, was always in the back room, cleaning up, tidying. It was the most fantastic job I had because I got to know everyone in the village. I knew every bit of gossip. There is nothing that is not said in a salon. I thought I had the most glamorous job in the world and I'm going to be a hairdresser. And then when I was 15 and a half, I got promoted to Shampoo Girl, which was my official Big title. Big promotion. Huge. All of that said, when I was 16, they hired a skin therapist to work in the, in the salon giving skin treatments and what we would then call facials, which I don't say that because it doesn't stop at the face. Your skin actually is the entire, the, your entire body. It's a living organ. I was inspired by her and I realized this is what I want to do. I want to be in the salon industry. I want to have a skill set. I want a skill set in my hands that literally could take me around the world. And it did. And when I was accepted to university to study skincare, you know, you do your A-levels and then you get your results in August and then you've got like two weeks to make a decision. I had to break the news to my mum that I was not going to university. I was actually going to enrol at Anthony of London Beauty School, which I did. And the, the fee was going to be £240 for my training and I was going to be an apprentice. I've asked you this before, but how did you get the confidence to launch a business? What made you think that you could rock up in California with all of these Americans who knew how to do it and have been, you know, building businesses for years. And think, yeah. I'm Jane Werwan from the south coast of England. Yeah. With my beauty diploma. Yeah. And I can do it. I can launch a business that everybody will know and associate around the world with.
skincare. And it will be known around the world, that you could launch a business that would be known globally. I actually wrote down my first kind of statement of purpose was a total world domination of professional skincare. I swear, wrote it down. Minor ambition. <laughs> Minor. And it was so ridiculously huge. But I thought, you know what, I'm going to focus on that. Because what that says is, it's not about dominating the world. It's about how can I do my very, very best work that would influence and help change other people's lives. Because the core purpose of Dermalogica has always been skill set training. We train 100,000 skin therapists a year, separate to the product, separate to whatever product we sell to consumers. So this is the whole back engine. And it was my back engine was my training. I remember you told me a story about how when you went to primary school at the age of five. Yes. Your mum tied a key around your neck. Four and a half. I was uh, in Scotland and you start school at four and a half. And I walked to school on my own and my mum tied our back door key on a string a soft string, like not a cool scratchy one, a soft bit of sort of string and dropped it inside my school uniform and told me you will let you'll use this to open the back door when you come home from school and you never this is our secret and you never show it to anybody mm. and i felt very trusted and i thought my mum i've got this mum that was in my head you know yes like you know i can do that i'll do a really good job at that now was i scared at four and a half to walk down the street absolutely I was frightened of the dog down the road that might run out and grab me. You know, said, yes, I was scared, but I had made a commitment to my mum and I was going to do it. And I followed through. I'm quite sure someone would call child services now if that happened, but my mum didn't have a lot of choices. And, and I walked myself to school. I walked myself home and I did it. And the thing is, Katty, as scared as I was, and I was scared, of course, knowing I could do that, that starts to build your confidence. I think what happens when we... Yeah, I mean, if you can do that... Yeah, I'm going half. to California. I mean, it didn't... What else? Click it, it, quite it's that not, quickly. Oh, yes, and yes. it's not totally, you know, here's this dot and there's dot, that dot. But I can see that as a small child realising I can do that, mm -hmm. I can mm -hmm. make that happen. And I'm doing it every day. And I can survive it. Yes. Would then later in life make you think, well... Actually, you know what? I did a really hard yeah, thing Yeah, you can already. figure this out. Yeah. We can, can figure, figure it this. out. You don't know what the hell you're doing. None of us know what we're doing until we do it. So you take a deep breath and then all the way through. And now, you know, I'm 65 years old. Now, whenever I have something to do like this, <laughs> I think, I can do this. I've done the hard stuff before. I can do this. And what's the worst thing that can happen if you don't do it? or you have to do it a second time. You didn't get up and walk straight away. You had a few attempts. It's okay not to get it right right away. I'm hoping this is not too hard. <laughs> no, it's fine. You're having a miserable time. I'm having a great time. Um, <laughs> so you tell me the story. Let's go to the origin story, story of Dermalogica because uh, you arrive in California mm. yeah. with your new husband. No, with my boyfriend. We didn't get married for 10 years. We lived together for 10 years and then we married, I guess once we thought we knew each other, <laughs> we married uh, because we always intended to, but we were building the business together. So Raymond and I built this together right from day one. We arrived in California. He is South African. I'd been in South Africa for four years, emigrated to the United States, very simply to pursue the American dream. When we got here, it was uh, President Reagan's second term and it was a 10.4% unemployment. So actually it wasn't a good time to come to California. However, Raymond with his marketing degree, his business degree, couldn't get a job. I, with my skill set in my hands and my superpower of my accent, I could walk into any skincare centre in Beverly Hills and get a job. And that's Score one for that London beauty school. Yeah, exactly. And mm. it's yeah, yeah, that was my ticket in. What I realized in that process of trying to get a job in a salon was that the training was much less here in California. Only seven states out of 50 even had a qualification to be a skin therapist, but it was called a cosmetician, mm -hmm. now called an aesthetician. At Dermalogica, we call ourselves skin therapists because we're trying to bring about a therapeutic change in the skin. 
When we spotted that opportunity, the opportunity wasn't that I could work in a salon. The opportunity was I could train people how to do the things that I already knew how to do. And they then in turn could have their own business. Mm. It was this idea of training skin therapists to become entrepreneurs. Ray had the business training, I had the skincare training. When we put that together, we were a training powerhouse for the salon industry. We didn't have a product. That came three years later. So you then had to find the money to launch the business. Yeah. Yeah, well, you're not going to find that because guess what? When you are an immigrant and you haven't even got a credit card, which we didn't, we hadn't built any credit. We had no credit score. We were unknown. And no credit score is worse than a bad credit score because... You, who right. are you? Where did you come from? So the we, banks weren't going to lend you no, money? No, no, no. They, they wouldn't even give us a credit card. Seriously, we had bank accounts. And yet we couldn't do anything with them. When we, when we started the business, we literally did not have a credit card. So everything we had to self-fund. And how do you do that? Well, of course, it's a longer story. But we self-funded on $14,000 that we scraped together from family who loved us, friends who vaguely knew us, and our own savings. You launched all of this on $14,000. Self-funded, never took a loan. And when we built the company to an acquisition, we owned it 100%. We had never given equity, never taken a loan. There was no debt to pay off. Was there ever a time where you thought, you know what, this no. is too much work, it's too hard, it may not work, I'm going to chuck it in. I mean, no. did, did you, and I'm going to get a job and a salary in a salon. Did you know? No, no, no. We were turned on by self-repeated enthusiasm. Ray and I would encourage each other like crazy. This, if this works, this can be great. Oh my goodness. We celebrated every small thing and it was very hard work. The fallback situation, if I ever had one, was, you know what? If all this goes to hell, I can still get a job in a salon. You know, good luck to you, your Raymond. Your skill set. I, my skill set that was my superpower. Yeah, yes. yes. Every time I go anywhere, Catty, whether it's in where my family live in Mull, in the Hebrides, all the way through to anywhere I travel around the world, Vietnam, South Africa, Norway, New Zealand, anywhere in between, the first thing I look in any small town or village, do they have a salon? And if I see a salon, and I always do, I am deeply reassured that I could work there. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Because I think, okay, you know what? I wouldn't starve. I can, yeah. Your I mum can was right. Here. Your mum was right. My mum was right. Skill set training. I know that the gold standard of education we have built to be the university degree. That's only one form of education. I honest, I know for a fact that we're missing our vocational and skill set training programs. And we're not in America, for example, building apprenticeships the way that we need. We can't execute on the infrastructure bill until we have people that know how to build stuff and are qualified to do it. Mm -hmm. We can't get uh, immigrants rehoused, reworking if we don't have apprenticeships and programs to put them into. And as we were talking earlier, we talk about climate change and we talk about political change. We are about to have the biggest human migration on our planet ever. What and how and where are we ever going to cope with all the people that have come and come to our countries with different languages, different... If they have a skill, we will be able to use them. And that's exactly... I feel it is a huge gap that we have stopped talking about this in not high school, because it's too late when you're in high school. People make a decision about what they're going to do between the ages of 11 and 13. And the reason I know that is because I'm a trustee at City and Guilds, which is the biggest apprenticeship program in the world. And they dictate all the apprenticeship criteria for the UK. And that's when children decide whether they're going to win or they're going to not. And those skills won't just be replaced by, I don't know, AI robots in, in your industry. You don't see that happening. We well, still need those people. I have not met anyone who wants to get a bikini wax with are they a human being? No, in fact... Actually, I haven't met anyone that wants to get a bikini wax. Well, you know, listen, I can do a bikini <laughs> wax in four minutes. Don't worry, you're in safe hands. But here's the thing. Yes, many of our jobs will be replaced, as they have always been in any industrial revolution. I will tell you that with technology being our current revolution, 
the equal and opposite reaction to that high tech is high touch. Our industry is booming. We've got right now 40% job growth in our industry. I've never seen more spas, salons, medical spas, massage, nails, hair, you name it. Look at your high street, it's a service business. And a lot of it's salons, a lot of it's restaurants. But they're service-oriented businesses where humans are doing things that humans do best. Mm. Cooking, caring, touching, kindness, compassion, talking. Mm. I'm not in the business of just skincare products. I'm in the business of human connection. And no, a machine is not going to replace us. I love that. The answer to high tech is high touch. Yes. Um, we have something to show you. A little mm. this is your life, Jane, well one moment and a set of photographs, which I'm going to do in a minute. But first of all, I'm looking at those chairs and I can't resist. Can I go and sit in one? Well, that's what, Can we, you hope show every, what, that's you what we hope everyone who passes by so, says, I want to sit one of those because chairs. Because it, cool. it looks like a dentist chair, but I'm thinking it's not going to be so tortuous going to go into the dentist. It's going to be fabulous. Okay, let's go and have a look. I do okay. feel a bit like I'm at the dentist. No, well, that's because it's just very professional. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not going to hurt. It's not going to hurt. OK. So we're going to talk about your skin. And the first thing we're going to do is what we call face mapping, which is where we're going to look at your skin. We're going to look at each area of your skin. I'm going to have a little conversation about what's happening there and what we're seeing with it, OK? okay. So I'm going to look at your skin and we're going to talk about what I'm seeing on your skin and how, first of all, you have fabulous skin. Well, I have a lot of makeup on because we have a very nice I, makeup artist. I, I know, but well, I can, we can see through the makeup. Okay. I'm looking at your skin and not the decoration on your skin. And genetically, you did a really good job in picking your parents. <laughs> Because, it was clever of me, wasn't it? Yes, because skin is genetic, like any organ. Right. You know, I grew up in the Middle East, mm -hmm. and I'm, it's interesting that you say I have good skin, because I grew up in the Middle East. I spent 16 years of my life mm -hmm. in the sun. Mm -hmm. I don't remember my parents putting sunscreen on me once. Well, they I probably they uh, did. In no, the 70s. and they no, so they even didn't have that it. understanding of the yeah. damage that our skin can do to our health, yes. right? Yes. That we can get has must have changed. Completely changed. Sunblocks really weren't around then. You had zinc oxide then, which would have been just a white paste. We didn't have the level of sophistication in being able to manufacture sunblocks that we do now, and that's improving every single year. They're getting better and better and better. So your parents probably wouldn't have put anything on your skin, maybe some zinc oxide. And yet, the genetics that you had helped to overcome some of the damage that may have been sustained. Mm. It's not the, every skin is different. I don't feel like I'm in the dentist anymore. That's good. This is nice. Yeah. Jane Wilwand. Yes. This is your life. Oh my gosh. Do you remember that show? When yeah, we were Eamon growing Andrews. Up? Eamon Andrews, this is your life. Well, Absolutely. this is your life. I have to remember it, make sure. So this, I love this photo. Oh, I love this photo too. Who is this? Oh, this is my family. Um, this is me. And uh, I was uh, just a little over three years old. Look at my mum. Mm. Um, this was about two months after my father passed away and I can only think that the photographer must have said say cheese because there is no way that any of us felt like smiling let alone my mum. Was your mum alive to see your success? My mum passed away in 2001 so she was absolutely uh, able to see our success. Uh, she never took it for granted and she always would say to me now don't start showing off. <laughs> Don't forget where you come from. So, so, so English. So English, right? Yeah. Okay, this photo I also love. Oh my goodness. This is Raymond and myself, and this is our very first training center here in Los Angeles in Marina del Rey. It was a thousand square feet. We paid a thousand dollars a month rental. We had just had this equipment delivered. This is the equipment we were going to be teaching our students on. And um, we had this photo taken and we, we were so nervous and so excited and we just were hoping that uh, this wouldn't be the last photograph and of us. I love together. this photo because Raymond's not here with us. He's not doing the interview with us, obviously. No, no. But he is, he's the sort of un, really unknown part of Dermalogica. I mean, yeah, he, he is 
just as much a part of oh, the company as you. Dermalogica could not have happened without Raymond, and it couldn't have happened without me, and neither of us could have done it alone. Absolutely yeah. not. No. He is the smartest person I've ever known, and if I had to start another business, which I don't intend to do, I would not do it with anyone else but Raymond. Mm. Yeah, and you still love each other. Yeah. It's our wedding anniversary tomorrow, oh, 33 years. Congratulations. Thanks, but yeah. we've been together 43. I mean, so. amazing, because you've been through, you've built a company together, you've spent so much time together, Yeah. and the marriage is still good. I know, isn't that crazy? So this photo I chose because I couldn't resist it. It has nothing to do with Dermalogical or the company, but can you just tell me what's going on with the hair? Oh my God, a perm. It was the 80s. It was a perm. What can I tell you? Um, I, none of these people other than one are even alive any longer. I was the that new hair. kid on the block. Look at that perm. Isn't it a fright? I bet you were proud of it. Well, uh, you know, I kind of knew that it was, oh, uh, even it then. was a little frizzy, yeah. Mm. However, uh, as soon as, this was at a trade show and I got an award for giving a presentation on skin analysis. Look at me, see, I'm so clever, I've got my Dermalogica pin on. That's well no, done, Jane. businesswoman notices. That's right. But um, here I am, and I am wearing my hair with the best confidence I can because it was really pretty shocking. But a few months after this, when it got a wee bit longer, I could wear it up, and I wore it up until the whole thing grew out. I cannot believe you found that. I don't know what's making it worse. The perm, which is really catastrophic, all this sort of like Vegas tinted yes. curtains. I love it. It's a trade show. It's the combination of the whole thing. It's yeah. something out of a sort of bad 70s movie i know but it, although yes, it was 80s, the 80s movie and it's yeah. the big shoulder pet it's yeah. the whole Look at thing that. yeah there okay. you go i thought you'd enjoy that i cannot that. believe you found that oh god <laughs> jane it's been as i knew it would be it's been such a pleasure oh, thank you so thanks, much Cathy. this has thank been just you. really lovely well done thank you um and thank you thanks well done to you too you did good